Dark Passage looking like they're not going to change their tune too much. Azillion and Alistair get banned out. Cassidy Maokai for Legacy Esports. So they're not going to leave them up. Rengar goes down. They take Lee Sin away from Crystal M. What does that leave Dark Passage here then for their first choice? Well, Lee Sin was available in game one and he was first picked actually for Dark Passage. Obviously not going to be the case this time around. He ran Nunu in the jungle previously and did very, very well with that Nunu. But I don't know if that's a champion that you first pick. And gonna play it safe, I see. Well, take the Tashman as the first choice. Make sure that Touch is uh, on a comfort pick for him. And we've seen that Brown can have a very, very big impact if you play well. And not only is it a comfort pick, that is now the one, two, three. That is the fourth time Touch has played Brown. It also denies it from Egypt. Egypt's play style, where he's been the most effective, has been aggressive, in-your-face champions. Like the Leona that he played yesterday, like the Alistair he got his hands on. And I wonder if they want to go that route. Tristana is up and available, keep that in mind. It was banned out previously. So I wonder if Legacy are considering going for something like the Tristana this game to potentially deny that from Holy Phoenix. And because they haven't, it may open it up for Dark Passage. Well, it's going to start off with the Vi choice here for Carbon. So going back to his game one choice, it means that we've seen Jungle Nunu three games in a row now. We'll see how that one all works out. And that's the one thing that's changed this time around from uh, Legacy's side. Tristana getting through the bands, which means that Holy Phoenix might return to the champion that he got the pentakill on yesterday. Nidalee, of course, was also let through for Fab Fabulous. You have to really argue that Brahm for Touch, Nidalee for Fab Fabulous, Tristana for Holy Phoenix, they're on pure comfort champions right now. They really are. They've got everything that they, that's they that been working for Dark Passage. And there is a hell of a lot of disengage on the side of Legacy with the Nami, with the Nunu. And I kind of get the feeling they might be going for a Protector ADC comp. So Choo Choo's maybe considering an Orianna for even more peel protection, uh, ability to engage or disengage, and maybe a Cogmore if they want to, because you can then have an oppressively strong lane. With Nami Cog, they're very, very strong in the 2v2 if they get another straight up lanes. If they do lock in the Orianna, you've then got this very uh, versatile team composition that can both play aggressively and defensively. And let's see which route they're gonna go. Maybe I'm completely off. Well, it will be Ziggs locked in here. I'm assuming that the Urgot will be switched away from is indeed, and it's Mundo that's gonna go over then for Minky Whale in that top lane. Had a few problems these last couple of games, but something a bit tankier. We'll see if Fab Fabulous can kind of put Minky Whale down early on in the game before Mundo hits his uh, secret point. And the, the thing with Legacy's comp thus far, they've still got the, the disengage, they've still got the power. Zig's minefield is still going to give them, again, opportunities both aggressive and defensive. But I need to see what AD carry they're going to lock in. It has to be a hyper carry. It has to be something like a Vayne or a Cog because you've got all of this ability to protect. And the problem for Choo Choo is because he's a squishy sort of ranged uh, uh, mage, he's obviously open to being killed by assassins and that's why Naru's gone the route of Fizz. Fizz locked in. They take Vi for the jungle as well for Crystal M. Obviously a safe and pretty easy gank once you hit level six out of Assault on Battery, point and click. And let Fizz then throw his fish down and well, you spend a lot of time in the air being able to uh, not being able to do damage or probably escape either. And there is the vein locked in. So Cardrid's going to have to go big for Legacy this game. All of Legacy are going to have to go big. I really like the Vi lock in because it was quite apparent with Legacy's picks that they were looking for a quasi protect the AD carry composition. They really were investing a lot to disengage, to zone control, to that type of uh, skill set. So locking in a Vi means you've got an instant auto engage onto the champion, whether it was Vi, uh, whether it was Vayne, whether it was Cogmore. In addition to that, the massive mobility on Fizz means even if he doesn't really land the Chum the Waters, in combination with Vi, they should be able to blow Vayne up. The only risk for Dark Passage is they don't really want to be engaged upon and they don't have the safest wave clear. So if Dark Passage fall behind and they're ever in a siege situation, massive advantages to Legacy. Yeah. But they haven't fallen behind in the two previous games, so what makes you think they're going to this game? 
Well, we want to know which team you guys think is going to come out on top in game three. Tweet hashtag DP win or hashtag LGC win to at LOL Esports. And we'll see what we think a little bit later on. It'd be kind of hard to bet against DP now. 2-0 up in a best of five. Need one out of the final three games. However, never count Legacy out because they've shown us already that they can beat Dark Passage. The question is whether they can do it three times on the trot. Yeah, I agree. And I think this time around, at the beginning of the pick and ban phase, I was a little uncomfortable. I wasn't really sure how it was going to play out. But as the picks have come in, Vi's going to start falling off in the later game. Nunu's going to become very powerful. Nidalee and Fizz, both AP-based champions, against Mundo, does great against double AP. I think Legacy have a chance. Well, I think all of Oceana right now is hoping that they have a chance here. Legacy needs to win three games in a row to come back and secure their spot for Worlds. That may just be the kind of pressure off scenario that they need here. And we'll see how Dark Passage reacts to things. We heard earlier on, we like best of fives and we like to win them 3-0. We'll see if they could do that here today. So the one thing I want to highlight, with FabFab playing Nidalee, if Kadra does get going and get to a point where he's strong enough, he actually can deal with the Nidalee. There is outplay potential with the Contem, with the Tumbles, with the Blade of the Ruined King. He can jump into FabFab's face and, and try to contain him in the mid-game. Um, in addition, that the lack of wave clear is the biggest risk for Dark Passage. In addition to the fact they're not the greatest of siege teams. If Dark Passage ever get grouped up in a, a turret scenario, much like game one, they run the risk of being caught by Mega Inferno Bomb, by Tidal Wave, by Nunu running into them. So Dark Passage, they're going to need to look for kills to lead to towers. We may be in for a long game if Dark Passage are looking to win. Because, obviously, against the Ziggs, you've got defense, and Dark Passage not the strongest uh, unless they tower dive, which they can do very, very, very effectively. Which they will do. Yeah, I think so, well. too. That's, that's kind of the idea here, right? That they're going to get cleared out so quickly that the real option is just to dive and then hope that you can take two or three towers after that one. We'll see, though, because still a long way to go in this one. we we'll see if Legacy's chat in between games is going to be able to bring them back in this best of five. Looks like they're fancying their chances. Will it be an invade here, or are they going to go towards that top lane with four? It looks like they're going to invade the blue. Yeah, I think that ward around the banana bush may have just spotted them. Uh, I wasn't paying 100% attention, so Legacy may have been giving away the information to Dark Passage. The lane swap does appear to be initiated by Dark Passage and equaled by Legacy. And I think with the sustain that Nami's going to give you, and the bonus damage from Tumble and Tidefall's Blessing when Egypt eventually picks that up, I think Kajun and Egypt can win this lane matchup, and I think they're going to have to, because the composition for Legacy to work hinges on Kajun's performance. Well, one thing that looks almost certain here at the start is that Chris Lem is only going to be getting a one buff start, because he didn't invade over to the enemy blue. And I don't think they realize just yet that their blue is actually going to be gone. He's just going to cross over and have a look at that one. We end up getting the 1v1s and the 2v2s in slightly different lanes. Obviously, the 2v2 gone top this time around. And we can see that Fab Fabulous utilizing that Nidalee to just bull, uh, bully Mundo out of lane. So, uh, Mundo's going to have a difficult time in that lane because of the fact that Fab Fab is going to be so much more powerful for a long period of time. But we need to see how Minky well handles himself. This is an aggressive... Here comes Corbin! Oh, this could be really bad news for Dark Passage. There's the jump away from Holy Phoenix Touch. He's also going to get back from it, and it looks like they'll get away. Some of the heal was actually used as Holy Phoenix tries to push them back. Sidesteps the bubble, and nice little first hand interaction there from Carbon. As a side note, something that uh, we missed, Touch's flashes on cooldown. That may have been a misclick super early on. We didn't see... We wouldn't see any sort of engages, but he did not have flash available to him. So summon a heal blown. Carbon with a, an early gank. Despite it not getting a kill, they did get a summon a spell. So Holy Phoenix and Touch can have to play a little more cautiously in the next couple of minutes. All right, now, they're having a few issues in this bottom lane, as you'd expect. Minky Whale being bullied, having to use all of his potions here to make sure that he stays healthy enough. Meanwhile, Carbon is getting his own blue buff, which, as I mentioned before, means that he gets that three buff start. I've already seen him in lane as well. We'll see what he can do moving forward. Of course, Vi 
chances are Chris Lehman is going to sit in the jungle, get himself to level 6 before he makes an appearance. Yeah, so we do see once again Kadri in Egypt. They're going all in. Holy Phoenix is caught. Oh, this is, could be bad for Kadri. Actually, there's the jump in. Oh, he flashed away. Exhaust goes down and they managed to get the first blood back. Touch walks off. Kadri survives. It's Egypt that picks up the kill and Carbon's now coming towards this mid lane. Naru shouldn't have too much trouble with that. We'll just jump away despite being hit there by that. Satchel charge. So, first blood going over to Legacy. This is their chance now to get this lane really going. The scary thing is that even though the first blood was secured by Legacy, they almost gave up a kill themselves. Kadri went very, very low in that trade. There was no summon heal on the side of Holy Phoenix. And if it wasn't for the double bubble from Egypt, you have to feel that could have gone very, very scary. So here's one of the risks. Naru and Crystal M. No safe wave clear. Just the presence of Carbon is allowing Choo Choo's to get multiple auto attacks onto the tower. And this is what Legacy need to do. Punish the weaknesses in Dark Passage's composition, and that is in defending tower sieges. Now oh, they're having to dash through and try and pick up the last of that. Yes, he's actually holding on pretty nicely. As AD carries now get back into lane. It's a vamp set to start for Vayne. Double Doran's blade over with Holy Phoenix. And we'll see. Well, we've already seen, I should really say, that he's not scared of jumping in there, trying to get things going. Went a little bit too deep that last time. Because we're going to see Touch moving forward once again. No full-on attack, though. No, not this time around. I really like the... Uh, bubble that EJ managed to land a second ago onto Holy Phoenix because it actually prevented him from getting the Siege Minion. So, very good skill shot working in his favor. And every time we look at this top lane, they're just going at it. There's another fight breaking out, Joe. Thank you, not actually landing. There's the vote coming in. 77% of you thinking that Dark Passage may have this one. Egypt's got no mana. Yeah, no mana. That leaves him in a dangerous position, but to be honest, Cardridge's done a brilliant job of actually just harassing Holy Phoenix down. While all of that's going on, Minky well actually forced to flash away, scared of being executed, doesn't have access to his ultimate, is 28 CS, uh, 18 CS behind rather, and again, really struggling. He's, he's gonna need to get some MR fairly early on, maybe a Spurred Visage first item, just to deal with both Nidalee and Fizz. And until he gets some of those defensive stats, he's not gonna be able to uh, duel or deal with Fab Fab at all. Three versus two, again, no wave clear from Dark Passage. I like the fact that Legacy is putting harass and putting damage down into the towers. Yeah, Holy Phoenix even getting bubbled up there at the back by Egypt to stop him getting forward and in a position where he could blow up those waves. In the end, they force Legacy to back off, but might just be a simple case of rinse and repeat until those towers start to fall. Yeah, but look at the pressure from Legacy. They're grouping up and they're going for the invade. Multiple members are coming into space. Choo Choo's does not have Mega Inferno Bomb, so keep that in mind. And Egym is the man that's under a little bit of pressure. Holy Phoenix is low if a fight were to break out, does have some to heal, and Carbon steals oh. away the blue buff. Minky Whale almost going down in this bottom lane, was forced to use his ultimate straight away there. Again, his regen in just shows you that how fabulous. Again, getting his hands on Nidalee was a very strong force in game one, backed out in game number two. Well, this time around, got picked once again. <laughs> That's cheeky from touch, just to stop Kajun going home. Yeah, just gonna delay him a couple of seconds and a little bit of a nuisance. So Holy Phoenix has gone double Doran's blades against the single Doran's that Kajun has secured thanks to the assist. He's also had that vamp scepter for a little while. Much stronger presence from Carbon this time around. Um, you know, actually ganking the lanes, having some presence, and. You know, uh, look at this again. Holy Phoenix is struggling. Of course, it is a 2v1. The summon spell blown once more. I was trying to hold out and see if he could just walk away from that one, but Carter is able to get on top of him and picks himself up. Well, gets another summoner spell out there, which means that Holy Phoenix have no flash, no heal, relying on his W, which we've already seen might not be enough to get him away, especially when Nunu gets involved with a blood boil on two people. I really like the combo of Vayne and Army because they synergize so fantastically well together. Vayne needs to get aggressive in order to stay relevant. Oh, I'll finish my point in a second. This is going to be a salty battery. Oh, it's coming in there. The spear lands in goes. But fabulous. He's actually tanking up the turret here, but he's able to just leap away. Nice kill back there from Dark Passage. Carbon and Choo Choo is actually chasing Naru away. Here comes the mid and the explosive bomb. And well, didn't quite land where they would have wanted that to. No, that was uh, 
Again, super cool spectator effect. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen the bomb travel oh, through the air. made me forget the name of the bomb. I know, that, was, it was. that was pretty, pretty cool. So, in terms of the duo, the reason I really like them, of course, once Nami affects a teammate with a spell, they get a movement speed boost. Vayne gets movement speed while she's chasing an enemy. Thanks to the sustain on Nami, the Silver Bolt's damage, as well as the Tumble damage, in conjunction with the Tidecaller's Blessing, they've got a lot of damage, mobility, utility in their side. The only risk for Kadra and Egypt is if they get caught by a brown stun, they are at risk of being bursted out. The bonus magic damage from those concussive blows, along with a buster shot, rocket jump, etc., is very, very scary. So, Legacy have to be very careful not to get caught out or simply take too much poke without Kadra returning any damage. We need to keep that focus up on that one. We actually see two Chews and Nunu now coming up towards that top side. Looks like they, as quickly as they appeared, are just going to pack away from it completely. So, no threat there on that side of things. This Fabulous has also made a bit of an appearance here in that middle lane. Are we going to see him going aggressive onto this one? Fab Fabulous versus two of them as Naru is going to jump in there. Absolute zero was used. There is the flash. The fish will miss, though, and Carbon's able to walk off. Yeah, yet he's going to be able to sidestep the one. Finally, we see Kaji hitting level six. Egypt's actually been six for a little while. Uh, thanks to the fact that he got that first blood and Kadra was out of lane for a tiny bit. But we do not have level 6 for touch. Here comes Crystal M. Assault and Battery is not available. Can he get the knock -up? Oh, ball break. He comes in. It's a very good flash there from Ejim just to get away from it. Both of them use the flash. Exhaust was used by Ejim as well. So, summon a spell advantage. All of a sudden in favor of Dark Passage. It was a flash from touch too. But obviously Holy Phoenix the important one with Rocket Jump and Flash going to have those safety mechanisms. Monkey Whale with no tower to fall back on has now rejoined the rest of his team. And again, no safe wave clear. Keep that in mind. Legacy may decide to siege up. Assault and Batteries a second away. Crystal M may be able to use it soon. Oh, Mega Inferno Bomb comes soon, but he'll be flashed away from there. The first kill. Choo Choo's looking like he'll die as well. Double kill onto Fizz. That is the least happy moment I think a Legacy could have at this stage of the game. It's getting that Fizz going after the way that Naru played his last game on Zed. That leaves the Tori open for the killing and Dragon. Legacy have made the same mistakes in all three games. They are overly aggressive when they don't need to. Look at the lack of vision. Um, Crystal M just walked down the river after ganking top lane. You have to think that Legacy had forgotten about that or they weren't communicating that information because Crystal M, after leaving top lane, could only go into Legacy's jungle or his own jungle, meaning he could respond to that three-man mid lane. And obviously comes in, sets up a nice gank, two kills, dragon and a tower. Nice swing in control. Dark Pass once again off to a strong start. Cardred here, <laughs> doing more than holding his own, he's got a CS lead. A lot of that can obviously be attributed to Ejim playing so well as well in this matchup. But he's currently 82 to 74 CS. If you look at the items, working up towards that play of the Ruin King, it's going to be possibly Static Shiv first here, I think, for Holy Phoenix. That's what he's tending to do, get the pickaxe and the, the uh, well, usually the zeal in there, and then move up towards that Shiv first. We'll see if he decides to do that here. This time around, we're also going to see Fizz having a Lich Pain here fairly shortly. As Minky Whale finally alleviates some pressure down on that bottom side of the map. We'll take some turret aggro for his pleasure, though. Also opted to go towards the Sunfire Cape first item. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what he did last time we've seen him play Mando. It can work for him, obviously, the Legion and the HP. We'll touch on that in a second. Touch. He's thrown down the ult. Oh, they did not actually knock up Holy Phoenix. There's the bubble as well. Carbon going to get involved. He actually got a kill onto Vayne there before he goes down. All credit to Holy Phoenix, really. In that three versus two, got the kill before dying. That leaves him on one, two, zero. Zero, one, two, Vayne as well. We'll see how that one already develops. Been very close on this top side of the map. And it was just such a good play from Holy Phoenix. He just comboed his spells. And like we said, the burst damage is in favor. You dare, there comes Vi from behind. Minky Whale, can he get away? Oh, fa Fabulous actually going a little bit low from that one. Needs to be careful here. Crystal M is going to get in there. He's going to get the CC down. And he gets the kill before fa Fabulous even gets into any remote danger. That's another kill onto Minky Whale. Five kills to two. Minky Well did finish that Sunfire Cape. And it's it's all gonna be about Cardred. Now the the goal difference is about four thousand ish. And Dark Passage, as long as they don't fall prey to overextending, 
they are not going to put themselves in a position where Vayne can run them down. The only risk for Dark Passage is how do they start breaking these inner turrets. I do think it's going to hinge on Crystal Aim getting kills. Because if Crystal Aim can open up a lane to get pushed, that's how they can wipe. Double teleport. Oh, teleport time. They're going towards Choo Choo's. He's dead as well. That'll be Naru now on the killing spree. Ejim is trapped between them. Can Minky Whale actually do anything? Touch actually might die here. Absolute zero comes down. Holy Phoenix is actually tanking up the turret, but they do manage to get one. He needs to flash away from the tower. Minky Whale flashes into it, but it's a triple kill for fa Fabulous on Nidalee. And that is the Nidalee play that we have been seeing from him the entire weekend. He's just phenomenal on that champion. We do see it again, it all stems from kills. In order for Dark Passage to take towers, they need to have the kill advantage. And just very, very well played. They focus cartridge so well. The burst damage from Holy Phoenix, when he combos his whole kit, is very high. And unfortunately for Cartred, no Blade of the Red King, not gonna get that heal or that HP back. Nor did he have summoning heal available either just means he gets dropped in a triple kill for Fab Fab. Third of his health there just burst down by Fab Fabulous. Now that he's got that Trinity Force on, it leaves Nidley at 4-0-4. A 3-0-0 Fizz. Two kills on the AD carry, one on the jungler as well. So we were talking earlier about how the fact that if Dark Passage get behind, they've got no safe wave clear. They might actually struggle to hold on to the game, especially against someone like Ziggs. However, if they get this far ahead, this is yep. where they'll just say, okay, we want this tower, so we're just going to dive you. Correct. And if anybody from Legacy decides to, to group up or siege, Naru's just going to throw the fish, Crystal M's just going to throw Assault and Battery, and there's very little that they can do. But I do agree with you. Dark Passage, with the lead they've built up, with the champion composition they have, they're going to dive you. Minky Well's going to die again. Yes, he is. No getting out of this one. Explosive shot will stop his ultimate really doing anything there as well. And that is fab fabulous now. Unstoppable. 5-0-4. You have to wonder, Legacy, this is the reason that they banned his Nidalee in game number two after he did exactly this in game one. Yep, left it up. Felt that Dr. Mundo would be able to tank it up if he was able to get to a position, but not going to be the case. Assault the battery, they're going all in. Dive time onto E. Jim. He's going to be the first one to go down. He, uh, Absolute zero, that's the name of it. Not really being all that effective. They do get touched low, so in the end it's a one for one. But they lost their inner turret and Naru is still pushing the mid lane. 8,000 gold at 16, 17 minutes. 500 gold more per minute is what Dark Passage is currently doing. I don't see them having any problems finding the kills they want. Fab Fabulous is building a cutlass after his Trinity Force. And he's just got such great mastery over this uh, reworked Nidalee pick. Punishing Legacy over and over. And truthfully, Legacy haven't grouped up. Legacy have a composition that can do well if they team fight, but now they're so far behind off the laning phase for the third game in a row. I don't think even a straight up team fight would work in their favor because of the fact that so many of their members can just get dropped instantly by Dark Messages, uh, Assassins, and, and, and Champions. Uh, fabulous here, looking to challenge Minky Whale for that big golem. Thanks to Cleaver for his ple uh, pleasure. They had a ward on him, so Cartridge was well aware that he was actually there. EG actually going very, very aggressive there in that mid lane. Wasn't quite sure what he was doing. The rest of the team were backing up, but took them a while to get in position. Meanwhile, Dark Passage going to be doing a Dragon. Going to secure this one uncontested. Extends the gold lead to 10,000 before the 20 minute mark. Second of the game, and Legacy, they need a turtle. Legacy needs to hope and pray that Choo Choo's wave clear is going to be enough to deter Dark Passage from tower diving him. Because if he doesn't, then they're just going to get popped and going to lose their, their turrets. I mean, Dark Passage have only got one inner turret remaining, which Naru is pushing towards and there's no one there to defend it. With the Lich Bane, he's also going to do a lot of damage to that tower, and he's got the support of the rest of his team. That's going down. Legacy can't hold it. Yeah, sorry, it's gone. EG actually started to move over, but basically it's going to be a non-starter for them there because that inner turret already been hammered away on by Naru and Crystal M. Holy Phoenix will come in after finishing off the wave, and that is now all uh, inner turrets down. Only the base left here, and it's not looking good for Legacy. Dark Passage. You have to feel just minutes away from securing a place in Worlds. I think so too. And, you know, in game one, it took Dark Passage around 30 minutes to get to this point. 
and Legacy have got a team fight comp once more. Let's see, absolute zero. This is Legacy going all in. Yeah, they're gonna try for it, but you see that carbon just knocked straight out. If they do manage to kill off touch though, are they gonna keep chasing from it and jump? The Vault Breaker puts them in safety. They get the one kill, but it's just not enough at this stage. They need to be picking up twos and threes and then using that to push out. They've not got a single tower this game of Legacy. No, nothing at all. Legacy have got no objective goal. And yes, they managed to pick up a kill on the support of Dark Passage. It's going to slow down the pressure. But that's the third kill of the game for Egypt. If that gold had been with a vein and helped him get closer to his Static Sheer voice, Phantom Dancer, or uh, Ghostblade rather, maybe, um, it obviously is going to be silly. The game just hasn't played out that way. The one thing I do want to highlight, though, is while the fight was going on, Fab Fab did sort of get bullied away by Minky Well in the bottom lane. So Minky Well has got a lot of hit points, got himself that giant spell, got that Sunfire Cape. So he's already at 2,700 HP. We need to see how effective he can be at tanking up because, again, if Legacy can buy time for Kadra to get damage done, yes, maybe, maybe they can win team fights. But the chances are so incredibly minute at this stage. And Fab continues his split pushing roll on that middle lane. It looks like the rest of the team just going to go straight to the top side and do exactly what they were looking for in game number one. Of course, they did falter a little bit in that one after uh, Legacy seemingly got bored of the whole split push action going in. Decided to fight, got a couple of kills and then pushed some turrets after it, but Basically, they respawned in and Dark Passage just pushed them straight back and got those kills back. And that's what broke them through onto the inhibitors. Look at this. They're actually looking to catch someone. They may do that, although they were stood on top of a ward. So Legacy knew they were there that entire time. The really nice thing about Dark Passage's comp this time, as opposed to game one, they have a much easier time tower diving if they want to with the buy. In addition, they've got the safety net of a Tristana knockback. Um, also, please note, Blade of the Ring King completed for Fab Fab. He is building to deal with Minky Whale. He's got a lot of damage, he's got percentage HP, and Minky Whale still has yet to buy MR. Mega Inferno Bomb, is it? That's uh, too late. Close, too though. late. It was very, very close. The smite of Crystal M coming in for Fabulous. He's going to pounce and get another wow. kill. Godlike flashes away from it. Might actually get caught out here, though, if he's not careful. That's a lot of damage. Comes in, turns around on towards Choo Choo. There's the heal as well. Auto attack will do it. <laughs> Absolute zero going to be used. Finally, they shut him down. But that's an 8 1 for Nidalee and the rest of the team pushing top. Yeah, Fab Fabulous is fabulous at Nidalee. He is unstoppable this game. Dark Passage is going to brute force their way onto the tower. They didn't need to tower dive, but they spent some of their ultimates, secured the objective. No wave clear from Choo Choo's means an easy objective secured, and they're going to get the inhibitor as well. And they may get killed as well. They dive on towards Kadrid. He's going down. Naru now out on the rampage at 4 0 0. Ejim falling low. Holy Phoenix just holding them away, and that is the inhibitor going down. There's a big wave down bottom. They look like they might want to take it. Four on three fight here on the top side as well. Ejim's down to half HP. There's no minions to actually tank up the damage of that turret. Meanwhile, there is the teleport coming in. They're going to take their second inhibitor turret. Inhibitor may fall as well. Touch actually is going to go down, but they get a kill with it as well. Holy Phoenix will jump away, and I think that might be it for now here for Dark Passage. Legacy looking to chase them down, but they won't get onto anyone. No, there's there's so such good play here from Dark Passage using the champion so effectively. The tower dives and all of it being led by Fab Fabulous, really. He completely obliterated Minky Whale in the 1v1. And anybody that challenges him has gone down. It took three members of Legacy just to kill Fab Fabulous. And he, he, his only defensive items were Merc Treads and a Negatron Cloak. Now he's got himself a Spurred Visage. He's got Lifesteal. He's got a built-in heal. I don't think he's going to die again this game. I can't argue with you on that fact. I mean, got the mobility, yes, maybe a little too aggressive previously, but they threw everything at him. And you could argue, may have got away from that one as well, if not for the full on, let's throw ultis at his face, yep. take him down. And he's just going to go back to that same role here. And why not? It's been working perfectly so far for Dark Passage. We've got men pushing up middle. They're going to have super minions starting to roll into that top lane. Open inhibitor on the bottom lane. 
They are getting close to finishing off this game. It's only going to take one fight, and then it'll be over. Yeah, one misplay. If if Crystal Lamb sees an opportunity to catch card grid or Choo Choo's, he's going in. I, I mean, it's there's there's no hesitation coming from the side of Dark Passage. They've got such a big lead, and they're going to take a second inhibitor now. Keep your eye on Crystal M. Holy Phoenix, he's going on Egypt. Well, he's fighting underneath the turret. Well, Flash gets the reset to jump away without dying underneath the tower. And there is that second inhibitor now open. They've got super minions already coming in. The minion wave in middle will start to stream in there as well. This should be all three inhibs down for yeah, Dark Passage. It will be. And also, Holy Phoenix is doing that 1v2. Kadrid and Egypt were trying to defend the mid lane before Kadrid backed off to deal with the super minions. There are now double super minions spawning in each of the lanes. Fab Fab, he's jumping. He was looking for another execution. He's got like a near full damage. Look at Kadrid. Where is he? Can't see him. Dead. Instantly dead. There is Chris Lem actually going pretty deep. That's the absolute zero stops and touch. Just tanking up the damage there for Fab Fabulous, who will then go on towards Minky Whale. Naru, meanwhile, on the top side, could be in trouble. The Ignite won't be enough to kill him. It's Crystal M locked him up there. And now Fab Fabulous is trying to get involved. Gets the kill before he can get onto the fountain. This is going to be the Nexus, so it's going down. The Nexus is focused. And Dark Passage win the wildcard tournament. They're going to Worlds. Unquestionably the stronger team. There is absolutely no doubt that Dark Passage were the better squad here in the International Wildcard Tournament. As you said, Joe, they qualify for the 2014 World Championships. They will be going to Southeast Asia. They will be going to compete with some of the world's best. And you know what? They are a strong looking team. They played different team compositions. They played aggressive, they played safe, they played split push. I'm, I'm very impressed. In contrast to yesterday, I did not anticipate this level of gameplay or control. No, the control is what really is the stark con uh, contrast to yesterday, because yesterday was just um, kind of one of those flow charts. Should we fight? Yes. <laughs> did we win? No. Should we fight again? Yes. Yeah. Just fight, basically, constantly, yep. constantly, constantly. And today, showing very much that they still fight if they're ahead. I mean, the, the duo in particular, especially this last game, constant trade yep. back and forth. Obviously, the first blood was basically Holy Phoenix rocket jumping on their heads to try and get the first kill and ended up dying anyway. But the fact that they've played this split push comp now, pretty much three games, they've done it so, so very well. And it's very hard to ban this team out. I mean, you yep. look, especially on red side where you've got the Maokai and Kassad in bands that you pretty much have to ban anyway. Naru again, new champion every single time we've seen him. His Fizz was great, his Zed was great. I liked his Zerat yesterday as well. I think Dark Passage have the potential to cause some upsets once we see yep. the rest of the world's teams fell out because they showed a lot of very impressive things. Their team fights, their communication, their laning is very strong. I still feel their vision is somewhat lacking. Yeah. I think if, I, if I'm going to call it a weakness, I would say warding and, and, and reacting to vision is something they could focus on, but they've got some time to do it. Go all the way back. We've said it multiple times this series. We have to say it again. Fab Fabulous said a best of five. We're super comfortable. We generally win 3-0, and he did. Got Nidalee twice. I can't remember exactly the score from game number one, but it was up towards those double digits, yeah. if not already there. I think it was eight kills he got in the first one. 10-1-4 he finished. He saw Minky Whale in lane. Number one, yeah, he's going to have troubles anyway just because of how that matchup works out. But he saw him. Trinity Force, dive in, get the kill, just rinse and repeat. And by the end of it there, I mean, he's got Blade of the Root yep. King building up, no doubt, towards another Infinity Edge like we saw in game one. That's exactly what I was about to highlight. Game one went Infinity Edge as like a third or fourth item because he, ne he needed some tanky stats first. This game, second item, Blade of the Root King. Nobody could deal with him. Nope. And Dark Passage, absolutely fantastic.